Hello, hello. Welcome. Um, my name is Michaela, and I am venturing out on this very new uh, creative project, if you will. I am primarily a writer. I went to school to uh, learn how to screenwrite by accident. I just did film and media studies and I stumbled upon screenwriting and it came naturally to me and I enjoyed it. And I've always loved TV um, and movies, but mainly TV. So my essential goal was to be a television writer and go to New York and uh, take that on. That's been about two years ago that that felt like it was definitely my life purpose. Um, but if I've learned anything, it's that your purpose uh, can first of all change and second of all just evolve. Um, so uh, my husband and I live in Connecticut. We came here about four and a half years ago from Virginia. Um, I grew up all over the South North Carolina is where I was born and then uh, we moved a lot because my dad's a Southern Gospel singer so music is I always got asked if I was like an army brat or you know stuff like that um, but that was what it was music just took us different places so North Carolina um, Tennessee Georgia uh, Georgia is where most of my family is now and then all of Zach's family is in Virginia I mean, we met there when we were kids, and I'll do a separate video all about that. Uh, but next month will be our 12 year, and we've been married for a little over five. So there's a lot going on, especially um, being together for so long raises a lot of questions like, when are you going to have kids? Uh, I'll cover some stuff like that too. Um, it used to make me really uncomfortable to talk about because I always thought it was kind of rude for people to ask that, especially when things like miscarriages are so common and some people just don't want kids, things like that. Um, I personally felt a lot of pressure being the oldest um, on both sides, basically. Um, the oldest on my mom's side with all the grandkids and then the oldest girl on my dad's side with all the grandkids. So. I felt a lot of pressure that I like, owed that, um, so I'll discuss that in detail in a different video. Just let me know if you're interested in seeing something like that. It's a very vulnerable subject, obviously, um, but that's what I'm here for. I want to talk about vulnerability, and that has been one of the most healing things for me. Um, I grew up in a home with bipolar disorder and depression primarily my father, but my mom as well with the depression factor, living and loving someone with bipolar disorder. Um, and they made it 20 years. And uh, that is a very messy timeline as well. Uh, Zach and I always, anytime we answer questions when we're meeting someone, um, and we're like, when did you, like, when is, is such an interesting question to me, because I'm always like, well, the timeline is messy, like, we were together and living in Virginia, and then I had to move back to Georgia, so we were doing long distance, and then I moved back to Virginia, um, and then ran out of money, <laughs> and we were planning a wedding, and so then I moved back to Georgia, like, things like that, just such a simple story, like, how did you meet, and where are you from, where are you from? all the time. Oh, where are you from? You're not from Connecticut, are you? No, I'm from all over the South. And, and yeah, no, you don't have an accent. And so it, it's just interesting that for me, at least, I try not to impulsively answer questions. Like I work in customer service. I've worked in coffee for June will be six years. And that is my passion. People are my passion. Coffee is my passion. <laughs> Making people coffee. <laughs> is is my main purpose I guess uh, at least for now like I said it changes um, so it's funny to me uh, how quickly we'll answer questions like how are you good fine good fine good fine good fine you're the all day long um, and I've made it almost a challenge to 
uh, we refer to it kind of as breaking the customer, like breaking the ice. You see this person every single day and they're always saying they're good. Um, but sometimes, most of the time, that's not true. Or um, it's just a quick answer because they're just in to get coffee, right? But if I've learned anything also is that coffee is not just coffee. There's so much more that goes into it. And I will also be sharing videos about that. Trust me, you will pretty much always see me with coffee or near coffee or wearing something regarding coffee. Uh, and I will explain why it's so important to me and that it's not just it's not just like another thing because there are a lot of things that I feel and we all fill our lives with uh, to fill a void and that brings me to my full reason for doing this um, being a writer and sharing my life with people on social media has been a very interesting and a roller coaster, like roller coaster ride journey. Um, it started out as me finally sharing these things that I felt like I had kept secret for a really long time. I felt like I was not able to tell people that my dad was bipolar, that I, like, that it was letting out some secret. I remember telling just very few people. That was when. That was a very important conversation that my husband and I had when we were 13 and 14. Um, that was huge for me because I was, when we met, I was keeping my home life a secret and just acting like everything was fine at school. Seventh grade, seventh grader, you don't know, you're not shown like the resources, you don't know how that all works but anyway um, so my dad was in and out of hos mental hospitals when my husband and I went, met and, and that was a huge huge healing period for me and for him um, for those who don't know uh, if you came over here because I you know you follow me on Instagram or on Facebook or whatever um, you probably know but you might not and uh, then people who just kind of clicked on this welcome um, but my husband's dad died about two and a half, two and a half months into our relationship. So th there was a lot of, a lot of bonding and, and, and quick kind of growing up and figuring out that followed. And uh, I mean, how do you, how do you navigate that at that age? So I want to talk about stuff like that. Um, I quickly just want to kind of explain the the name, uh, door number three. Uh, as you can see, I'm in front of all these doors in our bedroom. Literally, it's just like closet, like our closets, and then the linen closet, and then the door that leads to the living room. And it's just so funny to me because I'm like, what do I do with this wall? It's just a bunch of doors, right? Um, and so being a writer and very metaphorical and an overanalyzer all these things I can't help but look at this wall and just always be reminded that there are always all these doors that we have to choose from right here we go now 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 here we go here we really get in my head uh, and we've been in this apartment for um, we live above a hardware store it's really random I'll share that I'll share that story too, share all kinds of stories. I am nat by nature a storyteller, so that's that's what you're gonna get from me. Um, and I wanna hear your stories too, so that'll be cool. Um, but, so we lived above a hardware store. There's only six units, and we're apartment number three. My favorite number has been three, for what reasons, I had no idea. The older I've gotten, the more I've paid attention to certain numbers in the Bible. Um, and, and kind of what they mean to me and I really enjoy like from the TV and movie perspective where there's you know symbolism and stuff like that and I am a firm believer in that so when like number three is a perfect number uh, it also there's three God the Holy Spirit and uh, and Christ and 
it, that represents the Holy Trinity. And so there's like little things like that. I'm a, I'm a daughter of, we're three kids, and my husband is a son of three boys. So we both come from families of three. And so it's a very recurring theme in my life. And then also the wordplay of it, door number three, it, there's what, game shows and like choices and stuff like that of, you know, you don't know what's behind the door, which one do you choose? And this is the one, that, you know, we didn't know what any of the other units looked like, but this is the one that we got. And I don't think it's by accident. And I think it's cute. I think it's a cute little name. So <laughs> I decided on that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the basis of that. I hope that gives you a pretty good idea of what to expect here. Um, uh, a lot of what I want to share is vulnerable, but it's not all going to be super heavy. There's going to be plenty of, let's see how I organize my house, very, very small apartment. And this is the longest I've ever lived anywhere. I moved a lot when I was a kid. And when we hit the three and a half year mark, because that was the longest I had ever lived in a residency beforehand, I was so antsy and I felt like we needed to get a house and that just was not that's not what God actually wanted for us and we found that out pretty quickly um so yeah it's just been interesting to make this a home it's I mean we have made it a home but to continue to love it as a home and that home is so subjective and for the longest time I thought Virginia was my home for the longest time I thought that um, we would move back to Virginia and it, that could be possible but right now we are meant to be in Connecticut and continue to love people in New England and to show God's love in New England and meet and love all of these people that we've made relationships with and so why not like we we need to make it a home albeit it is a very temporary home and that is a huge huge very important lesson that i think we should all learn because god essentially god ultimately is our home and um he gives us these temporary things while we're here on earth and uh it's very fun and exciting and to learn things from things that are just things, right? They, they, they don't hold very much um, eternal purpose, but they do serve a purpose in, in, in a temporary way. And I think that our money shows us a huge thing that I am not good with money by nature at all. My husband is great and he has helped us um, to stick to a budget since we've been married. And I'll, we, will, we will share a whole video on that if you wanna see that. Um, it, it's very important that we are aware of what are the things that we surround ourselves with, what purpose they serve. So I am continuing to learn this. I'm continuing to make mistakes. I literally just had a major retail therapy experience this past weekend and then we had another sermon on money and it, it, it just reset my focus and so I want to share these things with you and I want you to share with me you know your experiences and so I hope that you will follow along at door number three uh, and I'm just so so excited to see what comes of all of this um, have a great day guys and I hope that you'll come along with me